let's turn the page to consumer searches. Happens to be my favorite. There are a, a lar there is a large demand for individual residential searches from individual consumers outside of the normal closing process. Think about it. If it, most of the time that you think an individual needs to search is when they're buying a house or financing a house. At that point, you're never going to be in direct contact with that person because their mortgage broker is going to order the search. Their real estate agent is going to pick the title agent to order the search. Speaking of real estate agents picking the title agent, let me, let me tell you a quick joke. Why did the title agent cross the road? That's close. He, he crossed the road because that's where his supposedly non-affiliated mortgage company was located. So, anyways, the title agent, no offense. I have other ones that, that uh, offend everybody. So, But anyways, um, consumer searches, almost always triggered by a family event or some personal event. Divorce, death in the family, something like that. A lot of times, somebody wants to find out what's going on with property. I can't tell you how many calls, inquiries we get from a divorce, about to divorce, wanting to divorce spouse, wanting to know what's going on with their house. And finding something that went on with their house. Oftentimes it's a spouse wanting to know, does my soon to be ex-spouse have any other property that I didn't know about? Did they sign as a mortgagor on a property that he doesn't own, but um, maybe one of his new friends owns, right? Um, very, very common. Sometimes it comes from an attorney doing a divorce. A lot of times it doesn't. A lot of times it's before it gets to that point. Uh, that's something that you have to generate from within your own internal market um, locally. Happens a lot. When there's a death in the family, I can't tell you how many times we find, usually it's a, it's a, a deceased person years past died they left you know the family house to the, the kids well one of the kids is in the still in the hometown the rest of the kids are scattered around the country the hometown kid is supposedly taking care of the house and keep an eye on it well guess what they're not they are renting it out to somebody they sold it they mortgaged it and the rest of the kids at some point just when they're getting weird conversations on the phone and not direct answers they're thinking something's going on hey let's run a title search on grandma and grandpa's old house. And they find stuff out. These are full price searches. These aren't people saying, I want $25 for a current owner search from a vendor manager. They, you know, this is, a, this is a retail person not comparing prices with, you know, not buying 50 searches a day, okay? Now, again, you're not here to, to, to charge somebody more than what it's worth, but what I'm saying is you, you have to charge what the value of our services are. Like, we used to be able to do prior to offshoring and everything else. Um, the reason I say that is because it's an opportunity to earn what we're worth as a searcher because in these searches, we're also gonna be giving more guidance to that person. The vendor manager knows a lot of stuff about titles and searches and properties. This person is more of a novice in those subjects. So you may have to do more customer relations with them and talk to them more about what things mean. You may not even wanna send them a, a traditional abstract or a, a search report. What does that mean to them? Um, you may want to offer an old school true abstract with all the documents released or not because you also don't want to get into a situation of making legal conclusions for an individual. When you give a, a title report to a mortgage company and say, here's a mortgage, here's a release, it's paid off and give it to them, you are making a judgment. In some states you can't do that unless you're an attorney. But even if you're not in one of those states, you give that to a mortgage broker, you give it to a title underwriter, it's not a big deal because it's industry. With a retail consumer, you want to be very careful with that. So maybe you want to give them a full abstract with every document. Okay, so you, you're not making a judgment, you're just telling them what's there. You also want to be careful of the language you use on that search about saying, this house has liens on it. Because that could be, I mean, we've all heard there's a phrase in the industry, in the real estate industry, slander of title. You say something bad about the title of a property and there's some very serious consequences in most states. It's very specific what that means. Um, so you want to be careful about the language. But that being said, divorce, death in the family, heirs, um, lots of business out there for that. A lot of it. Okay, um, it's 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 very dramatic. The the other part of it, which 
um, is an issue that comes up is, and you see it on there, SBA, Small Business Administration, requires a lot of searching. Individuals generated these requests. It's not for a small business loan. Here's what happens, and a lot of you probably already know this. When there's a natural disaster in an area, hurricane, flood, tornado, whatever, house gets torn down, gets damaged, there may be some insurance, maybe there's not. The person who owns the house gets their insurance money, maybe they don't, they pay for it, they need more money. They go to FEMA or the federal government to get grants, loans, and sometimes direct payment, sometimes it's a low interest or no interest loan. The SBA is the federal government entity that administrates giving that money. They give it in the form of an SBA loan, just like you would get for a small business loan. Just because they already had the, pro the mechanism in place to hand out loans, FEMA gave it to them to do. When the SBA does, uh, gives that money, I have a copy of the form in the back. It's a very specific process. Here's how it works. The SBA says to that person, okay, we looked at your property. Here's your damage. You got this much in insurance. Based on your circumstance, we're going to give you $20,000. We're going to give you $5,000 in a grant. Free money. You got it. You don't have to pay it back. We're going to give you $15,000 in a low interest loan, no interest loan. Pay it back over the next five years. If you're still, sometimes there's a clause that waives the payback. If you're still the primary residence owner in five years, the rest of the loan is wiped out. Here's how we'll do it. You sign this paper for the loan. You send it to us. Along with it, you need to send a title search. The title search has to show that loan being recorded already. Loan gets recorded by the, the person can bring it to the courthouse themselves. They can have an attorney do it, whatever they want. They can have you do it. They sign a loan, it gets recorded. You have to send a copy of that recorded SBA loan, a copy of the deed showing ownership, a copy of any other loans or mortgages, just like a regular current owner search, a few other details to the SBA. The SBA gets it, they underwrite it, then they send the check to the owner. They need a title search. They have to have a, a title search company do it. The person can't do it themselves. When there's a natural disaster or any kind of you know, issue in an area, um, this uh, a lot of this comes up. There's a ton of business uh, that comes up from this. It has to have a signature by the person that did the title search and uh, business information. So if you're a title company or an abstractor, you don't have to be, most states don't have licensing, so really what does it mean when you say I'm a title searcher and this is my company? It doesn't mean much in most states. If you're a, a, a NLTIA certified abstractor, certainly put that, adds credibility. Like any other government program, there's bureaucracy. Sometimes when they get it, they say, no, we don't like it, they kick it back. It's the same one they took five times in the same format. They liked it other times. They don't like it this time. You might have to change something. Don't worry about that. It happens. Try to get in the loop of that contact with the SBA yourself rather than giving it to the customer. Let them send it. Send it back to the customer. The more you can get in a loop and deal directly with that office, the better off you are. It'll help the customer, too, because they don't have to deal with, you know, the, the SBA calls back and says, uh, where's the legal description? What does the homeowner know about a legal description? Most don't. So if you can get in that loop, better off. SBA searches, there's a lot of them that get generated. Even when there's not a natural disaster, any type of federal assistance on, on owned property uh, is there. Has anybody done um, many SBA searches? You done a few? Any problems with uh, the government? Yeah, they kick them back a lot. I know. I know. It's frustrating. At first, I thought I was doing something wrong, but it's really, it, it, it's different people. You're exactly right. Exactly right. And, and uh, sometimes if we know, that's why if you can get the original paper from the SBA and see who it came from, most of them seem to come out of Texas. I don't know why, even at the property somewhere else. Um, sometimes you can look at the last one you did that got accepted by that guy or gal and do it that way. Uh, if you do a lot of them. But that's, I'm, again, I'm glad it's not just me that they get kicked back. The last thing you want to do on any consumer searches, because you don't know what they're using it for. They might be using it for a court case, for a lawsuit. Maybe they're just nosy about a neighbor, maybe whatever. You want to number your pages. Because a consumer is using it for some things. We've seen a consumer where they get a search, has a lien in it. Well, they take out the page that said lien. Oh, my property doesn't have any liens. Right? So you want to number your pages so that it just keeps things copacetic. 